Dar las cu omora What? Hey guys, welcome back to the Women in Power segment on the Larry podcast. My name is Rebo Mara and I'll be your host for today. I'm with the one and only Mary Grace and can you please introduce yourself because I don't want to say too much <laughs> and I want you to tell everyone about yourself. Thank you so much for having me, mm -hmm. it's an absolute honor. Um, hi everyone, my name is Mary Grace Whitehead. I'm a 22 year old psychology student about to embark on an honors program. Uh, founder of the Mary Grace Whitehead Foundation and CEO of Such Intentions, and I am a humanitarian at heart. Oh, so. lovely. That's so <laughs> lovely. So, can you please tell us about yourself? Out of business, who is Mary Grace and how was your upbringing? So, um, outside of uh, business, mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, that I just graduated my undergrad mm -hmm. in psychology and I'm about to pursue my honors program. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also somebody who, aside from business, I love to always engage with people. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that I've been practicing since growing up. Mm -hmm. I would always invite the kids from my street to mm -hmm. come to my house and mm -hmm. we'll play together and I'll be the teacher and they'll mm -hmm. be like the learners and I'll be like kind mm -hmm. of teaching them. <laughs> but like it, yeah. was, it was a way to encourage the importance of education. I mm -hmm. think that's where it kind of stemmed from. Mm -hmm. Um, and also just for them to also pursue mm. sports and culture because we would play soccer, we would play netball mm. with the girls and we would also do short little mini plays mm -hmm. and things like that. So that's kind of uh, my background mm. and how I grew up and mm. coming from a community such as Western mm. I mean. Yes. <laughs> so like growing up in Westenburg, yeah. yeah? I believe that you're breaking a stigma in a way. Yeah. So like how do you feel that people are looking at this whole situation of you being Mary Grace, running a foundation and coming from Westenburg where people just know that young girls are getting pregnant, boys are getting addicted to drugs and how do you feel about that? I think till this day people mm. are actually still shocked every mm. time I say I'm Mary Grace and I'm from Westenburg. Mm. They'll be like really from Westenburg mm. because they're always associated with um, gender-based violence, mm. drugs and alcohol abuse, teenage pregnancy, mm. as you've mentioned, and those are the social ills mm. that my community is um, trying so hard mm. to rise above. Mm. And I'm so lucky to have been resilient to those social mm. ills because I managed to grow up in a home mm. where my parents always um, put me in line and mm. guided me and mentored me. So when coming to really putting it out there, I think most of the things and most of the initiatives and mm. projects that I do, um, also in terms of my own personal development, mm -hmm. is always trying to keep in mind that there's a girl out there who is mm. watching, yes, um, who's going through my Instagram, who's mm. going through my TikTok, who's going through everything, mm. um, envisioning a better life for themselves mm. outside of those social ills that are mm. in Westenburg. So that is... Um, you know how I try to deal mm -hmm. with those stigmas mm -hmm. um, just by putting everything out there because you know inspiration mm -hmm. really does go a long way in terms yeah. of really empowering somebody to mm -hmm. take on the next step. Mm -hmm. So like we all know that gender-based violence is a very very sensitive, to sensitive topic in South Africa so how can you empower women to stand up and speak for themselves? So um, with the work that my foundation does, the mm -hmm. Mary Grace Whitehead Foundation, I primarily focus on youth empowerment, mm -hmm. however, um, I do want to emphasize that when coming to gender-based violence mm. and, and women, it's so important for us to have conversations. Mm. That's one of the key things that I learn, especially mm. with what I'm studying. It encourages open and honest and transparent communication. Mm. So. You know, I know, especially when coming with women, mm -hmm. when we come together, we tend to divide because we mm. see each other as competition. True. And you don't see um, somebody that you can learn from mm. or things of the sort. Mm -hmm. So I think that's also what pageantry tries to mm. um, do in terms of combating that 
uh, gender-based violence, mm -hmm. giving women and girls the confidence mm -hmm. and the power that they need to be able to stand up on their own mm -hmm. feet and be grounded in themselves to say that, you know what, this is not right for me, this mm -hmm. is not something that will contribute to my personal development, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. then obviously seeing other people that are around you, mm -hmm. having that power and being mm -hmm. empowered, it goes a long way to mm -hmm. actually giving them that motivation to, yeah. you know, yeah. True, so like, what would you say to a woman that's watching this episode at the moment and she's experiencing gender-based violence, she does not know what to do. So like, what are the two cents that you can say to them? I think the only two cents that I can say is speak out. Mm -hmm. um, it, I know, you know, there's a lot of things that are failing us at the moment, mm -hmm. but speaking out to a friend, mm -hmm. speaking out to a family member yeah. will honestly give you insight as to how mm -hmm. to deal with the situation. Mm -hmm. and Not dealing it with it alone. Yes, mm -hmm. um, more especially when coming to access to mental health professionals mm. who are trained and qualified mm. to deal with those kind to help you mm. um navigate those kind of challenges mm -hmm. it's very important so obviously if you mm. speak with a friend or you speak with a family member um they might know somebody who you is a mental you. health professional mm. who can be able to assist you nowadays people are even looking towards church mm -hmm. um as a form of you know seeking some sort of spiritual counseling mm. um, because you do know that priests and pastors and so forth mm -hmm. they do get trained on how to provide emotional yeah. and spiritual True. counseling yes. so those are some of the the, the, the avenues that i mm. can give to this young lady mm -hmm. who is watching us right now mm. who is going through something and does not know where to start mm. um, those are the few channels that you can explore mm. and obviously whatever makes you feel comfortable mm. is of paramount importance mm. Do you believe that you'll be collaborating with other foundations or campaigns this year? Most definitely. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I can't create change Alone. or impact Kilewan. Yeah, It's true. very important for you to mm. collaborate and build relationships. Yes. I'm very big on building relationships, mm -hmm. more especially with stakeholders, because mm. I believe that one good relationship that you start and you initiate today mm. can actually carry you mm. into prosperity mm. or success on whatever it is that mm. you are intending on doing. Mm. So I will definitely be um, collaborating with other foundations, mm -hmm. more especially that are located in places that I'm not based in, mm -hmm. because that way we can be able to impact people mm. from various communities mm. as well. Um, I've actually got my back to school campaign that I'm okay. partnering with the Hollywood Best Foundation. Mm -hmm. So that is something that I can mention right now that goes to show that mm. I am open to collaborating mm. with other organizations mm. and foundations as well. Yeah, that's amazing. So um, I wanted to ask, right? So do you have friends? Like, do you have friends that you know that, you know, I'm this one, I can trust, and I believe that they have my back all the time? Most definitely, your circle mm. determines where you'll go in life. Yes, true. Um, you know of the same guilty by mm. association. It's mm. very important for you to see mm. um, and to ask yourself the mm. people that you want to rub shoulders mm. with and that you want to be around because people will look at your friends first before yes. they look at you to true. determine the kind of person that you true. are. So I definitely do have mm -hmm. um, those friends in my life. Some of them go way back. Mm -hmm. Some of them I've met in high school. Mm -hmm. Some of them I've met along the journey mm -hmm. of life. So mm -hmm. I definitely do have those mm -hmm. friends. So how did you navigate around that? How did you choose the right friends? Because I believe people out there just feel like they are not sure if they're in the right circle or maybe they have friends, but then they just feel not welcome to be friends with those people. We just do not gel so like how do you choose the right friends i think um you know you'll always see it firsthand mm. once you click with somebody you already know mm. i think that's okay i speak for myself mm -hmm. i already know that mm. once i click yeah so like with my best friend i actually mm. met her um when i was buying a bonnet she used to make bonnets okay and hair products and so mm. forth so i bought a bonnet from her and when I went to go and pick it up, mm -hmm. it was like an instant connection. Mm -hmm. We just started talking as though yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's those kind of mm. things that you should definitely be on the lookout mm. for because I didn't go there with the intention of 
making, finding yeah, a friend finding or a making friend. a friend. Yes, and I true. think that's also a mistake that most mm, people do. That's mm-hmm. why they'll end up in wrong circles because mm. you're going into places looking for friends mm. and it's not supposed to happen or yeah, it's true. supposed to happen organically. Especially with relationships relationships as well, right? Exactly. Mm. So it's it's very important for you to just You'll, mm. you'll, you'll, you'll get attracted, mm. you know, those things will come naturally yeah. to you. So it just happens spontaneously like mm-hmm. that, and then ever since we've been in touch with them. Yeah, do you believe in marriage? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Mm-hmm. I think it's a beautiful thing. Mm. Um, you know, I feel like I definitely do mm-hmm. want to form that kind of a bond mm. and a union with God mm. and okay. my significant other. Mm. I think for me, the most important thing um, or the highlight in a mm. marriage is definitely the God aspect of it because you're inviting God into yeah. your relationship that is now moving into a union True. that is between you, your mm. significant other, and mm. God. So I definitely think that it's something that is mm. so beautiful, mm. um, can be beautiful, mm. and you know, it's so heartwarming mm. to see people who have been in marriage you yeah, know, for true. decades because it, it makes you see that mm. you know love still is there in yeah. a world where there's so much bad and vile mm. and evil that's happening mm. you can still be happy with somebody and have a lifelong fulfilling mm. friendship mm. with that person so how did you grow closer to god because i believe there are people out there who are ashamed of loving god mm. who are not sure who feel like people are going to judge them because um, I've seen a trend, right, mm-hmm. where people feel like when you post about Christianity or growing closer to God, it means that you're going through a lot. Mm-hmm. So, like, how, how can people just realize that it's actually a good thing and not a bad thing? I think it starts with having conversations with yourself. Mm-hmm. What is the reason why you want to have that relationship with God? Is yeah. it because you see somebody posting it and now you want to post it just mm-hmm. because... Mm. Or is it because there's something that happened to you internally oh, yes, that forced you for a human look mm. at God and look to Him and only Him yes. to help you get out of whatever that situation mm. is or to make you feel like, you know what, mm. this is somebody who actually loves me, who has the best mm. intentions for me. Mm. Um, so knowing your reasons why you mm. want to have that relationship with God yeah. will definitely be the reasons why it will be so edifying. Mm. Um, I'm somebody who grew up in a household where we always went to church. Mm-hmm. We used to go to church every single Sunday. Saturday, <laughs> Sunday with my mm. dad. And, you know, I think growing up in that kind of a household, mm-hmm. it showed me the importance of having a relationship with, with God. God. Mm. So also seeing my mom, she's a very prayerful woman as mm. well. Seeing how she puts God first before mm-hmm. everything. When she gets into the car, she mm-hmm. prays. When she gets out, mm-hmm. she prays. In the morning, she prays. At mm-hmm. night, she prays. So seeing those kind of mm-hmm. things teaches you. You observe. Mm-hmm. You're impressionable as well. Mm-hmm. So seeing those kind of things mm-hmm. showed me the importance of mm-hmm. God, living a God-centric life. Yeah, true. I believe that there are people out there that would want to change their lifestyles. They want to grow closer to God. And they want to be true to themselves like how do you do that i think as i mentioned Mm. um just knowing why Mm. you're knowing your why i'm a firm believer in knowing Mm. your why Mm. it's so important to know that because it's the compass that will drive Mm. you to the direction where you need to go in where you're destined to go in where your faith is so um when coming to have a relationship with god you need to ask yourself Will you be able to live without Mm, him? Will you be able to go through Mm. any challenge and come out at the top and say, I survived this? Um, You know, I feel like all glory goes to him. Mm. We are here because of him, of him him sacrificing his one and only son for us. So um, definitely, Mm. definitely knowing your why. Mm. don't just do things because you see things happening Happening around around you you. look towards yourself first Mm -hmm. look towards what's happening in your life Mm. everything that's happening in your life Mm. sometimes we always see things happening coincidentally Mm. but it's not a coincidence you know it's actually supposed to be that way Mm. and that's god just trying to show you Mm. that i'm here i'm present Mm -hmm. i'm available Mm -hmm. whenever you need me 
Yeah, let's talk about mental health, right? Yes. Have you ever struggled with your mental health before? Um, definitely. Mm -hmm. I definitely have. Um, I used to be very anxious. Mm. Um, and I just, yo, I have. <laughs> yeah, I get you. I, I totally, I, I totally I get you. But um, I think also because of my character in high school, mm. I was normally the person who people would come to mm -hmm. um, for, for for advice or mm. when you want to bathe mm. or when you want to talk about anything. Mm -hmm. So it kind of pulled me a little bit away from mm. actually dealing with my own um, mental health yes, issues true. because I'm always so focused on how the Helping person, others. Yes, it's still something that I'm mm. actively struggling from. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it's just this thing, I grew up in that kind of a mm. environment mm. where I wouldn't want to see the next person crying mm. and I'd want to go and ask them what's wrong, mm -hmm. you know, so I definitely have, I'm still trying mm. to, <laughs> you know, yes, 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 definitely. And, and, and deal with the it. working progress. Man. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Definitely. Um, let's talk about healing. Mm. Like healing is a very, 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 very sensitive thing. And I believe people need to understand the term healing and what it means. Mm. So what does healing mean to you? I think for me, healing means to be observant. Mm -hmm. If you're not observant, you won't know what to heal from. Mm. Um, so the more you look at yourself, mm. the more you look at everything that's playing out in mm. your life, you can see and you can feel most importantly that this thing, as soon as you think about it, I will try to stop. Yeah. You know, so True. those are the kind of things that you need to be, to look out for because mm. if you're not observant, mm. you won't know that this is something that your subconscious is still it's not digesting, mm. it's not settling. Mm. So I think for me, healing is definitely being observant mm. of your internal and your external environment. Yeah. Paying True. attention. Um, it definitely goes a long way and it cuts across. Mm. Do you read books? I'm trying to. I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm Same trying here. To. Which book are you reading at the moment? I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to get into it. Um, I got this book last year. I think mm -hmm. it's called guys think something <laughs> i'm gonna get there to do, but it's called think okay. something i think we should get the book find me find i me. love that book yes mm -hmm. by um i forgot her name but then like that book is amazing i'll definitely yeah. give it a, i think mm. you know reading also i used to read a lot mm -hmm. I started reading was it because of school of, no i started reading at the age of four really my dad used to buy newspapers every single day mm -hmm. and i would just read like i would just read so mm -hmm. that's when my love for it. But then as I grew older, I don't know what happened. These movies and series yeah. are starting to mess with me now. Yeah, yeah, but like, really I definitely do want to mm. get into it because I feel like mm -hmm. it will teach me a lot of things. Mm. It will open my avenues. True. You know, once you start reading a mm. book that was written by somebody who's there in mm. America and you're here in mm. like, yeah. obviously, you know, mm. it's going to open your mind to mm. different things and new mm. things. So I definitely, I will give it a mm. Finding me. Yes, finding me. Yeah. So, um, have you ever experienced bullying before, or like you just go that people liked and? Yeah. No, I don't think I've been. I mean, there was this kid in mm -hmm. primary who used to make fun of my ears because my ears mm. used to be but pink. But you have beautiful all the time. ears. No, they like, used to be red. Like oh. you can see for the um. But I feel like people always find a reason to bully you. Man. <laughs> Imagine being bullied because your ears exactly. are red. I go. I don't think I, I experienced like. <laughs> mm -hmm bullying as mm. compared to how people are being bullied really? nowadays yeah. it's something that i've also observed in mm. the schools that i visit when mm. i'm doing my charity initiative mm. um children committing suicide because yeah. somebody made fun of them mm. and then that kid dies and then now mm. the other kids are like yeah it was because of you, you. and then and yeah now they also die suicide. Yeah, yeah. You it's, know? So it's, it's bad it's, it's really bad mm. and it's something that we also have to start talking about and teaching mm. these kids for it be kind to everybody whether True. you know that person or not True. um if you don't have anything nice to say don't say mm. it at all 
and this is not just for mm. even us as young adults and as mm. adults it's something that we need to practice mm. because you don't know what the next person because is i also going believe to be. um bullying is not being experienced by kids only because exactly. adults experience bullying every day exactly. on social media and I, I believe that people just don't understand and yeah. hurt people hurt people exactly so, like whoever is hurting you just know they're exactly. hurting as well so wh- whatever you say just make sure be, you mindful. Know, you be mindful yeah but then like how can we prevent cyberbullying because it's been it's been happening and it's been affecting a lot yeah. of people in the country yeah. hence i'm saying that conversations having mm. conversations with educating people and informing them mm. what is cyberbullying in mm. the first place because mm. you find that you are just commenting on and you don't know and you're saying that you know, you gain so much weight mm. and that time they are body conscious, mm-hmm. their self-esteem is low, mm. that one comment out mm. of the ten comments mm. that are saying that, yo, mm. you look so pretty, mm. it automatically falls flat. Yeah, they're true. focusing on that one what, thing that, that one person said comment. that they don't even know. Mm. So I think it starts with actually educating people for the, mm. what is it Sorry, before we can talk about how to prevent it mm. or how to um mm-hmm. decrease it mm-hmm. it starts by educating so that they know that okay this mm-hmm. is what it is mm-hmm. and then for for us to know what it is we'll know what to do in order to avoid mm-hmm. practicing it mm-hmm. so i think it starts with having that conversation first yeah. educating mm-hmm. be it mm-hmm. be it what's mm-hmm. wrong mm-hmm. let's have a conversation mm-hmm. what doesn't make you feel okay mm-hmm. i said it i said it but how can you telling mm. me for a tricky village mm. can also put it in my mm. hands or give me that accountability mm. to say, okay, look, I didn't mean it that way, mm. but I'm sorry. I yeah, to be issue. accountable exactly. and just say sorry. Exactly. Yeah. But not to so pull like everything, mm. but if somebody doesn't know, mm. you know, what hurt you mm. and, and they said it, mm. it also comes with the next person to say that, you know, you said mm. something and I didn't like mm. it. So starting with those small little things mm. will help us to tackle mm. its entirety. Yeah. Okay. Um. I know there are a lot of girls our age, young women that are in not necessarily like physically abusive relationships, but emotionally abusive relationships. Mm-hmm. And there are times where you feel like you have to force yourself out of a relationship just to take care of your own mental health. Mm-hmm. How can you do that? You know, I had a neighbor from my community who was in that kind of a relationship Mm. um it was physical it was emotional Mm. and um it's actually very heartbreaking Mm -hmm. but it honestly goes with that person Mm. Um, in as much as yes i would advise her and i would tell Mm. her for it you know this, this especially mm. because of her reasoning for why she stayed in that mm-hmm. particular relationship because mm. she felt like she can't get somebody else who's gonna love her like her, love her the way that he exactly. loves her yeah. you know him hitting her mm. this person i really love her that's why mm. i would be mm. it. it's kind of twisted it's, if you it's think so about traumatizing it. but you know when she would tell me for her, that's the reason why she's staying in that kind mm. of relationship it broke my heart because they stay in it because of 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 things that not necessarily because of the idea or the belief that they can't get whatever it is that they're getting somewhere else. somewhere else true. you know whether it's true for the financial part of mm. it nobody's gonna take mm. care of you the way that person mm. is taking care of you mm. or nobody's gonna love you the way that person mm. is loving you I don't mm. think it's worth your life mm. being an expense. And I also think people should understand why people decide to leave relationships. Because yeah. people are very judgmental. Yeah. Why are you leaving? He's a good man, Savannah. Yeah. You know? Oh. Like, and you're like, guys, you don't know what I'm going through. Exactly. So please. People are very judgmental. Yeah. So like, I feel like people also need to respect people's decisions yeah. once they decide to leave toxic relationships. Yeah. And do not be judgmental, guys. Especially Please. because of what we're putting out there. I mean, mm. you see now I'm posting, I'm with my man. Yes. Everything, everything yes. is happy. People but... only see the good side exactly. of the relationship and they do not know if you're being abused exactly. or what. So, yeah, people really should just be minding their own business, yeah. honestly. Honest. Drink water, guys. Drink water, guys. <laughs> <laughs> True. 
Okay, so what about um um self confidence? Mm. Like, have you ever struggled with your self confidence? Yeah, 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 I used to think I was silly. It Yo, worried me a yeah. lot. It troubled me because <laughs> yeah. I go on Instagram and I'm seeing oh, all of these girls. Mm. I mean, get there, right? in as much as yeah. you know, we we are trying to inspire mm. and we are trying to empower mm. other girls. That doesn't mean that we are you not have going all through these challenges yeah. ourselves. Mm. Um, I used to be very insecure about mm. my body, and I think gradually. I just told myself that, hey Joe, mm. do what you need to do to make yourself mm. happy, whatever it is. If you feel like you're not comfortable in it, then what do you intend on doing to make yourself mm. to make yourself feel better about it? Mm. And that's also one of the reasons why I started my business mm. because I realized that a lot of women, in particular, mm-hmm. um, when they go to a nail tech, mm. and they won't be completely satisfied. Mm. Um, and that messes with somebody's confidence. Yes, true. So the main aspect for me was doing people's nails mm. or beautifying them, mm. exudes in them confidence. And mm. with that confidence, they can feel like, you know what? Mm. I can get out of this toxic mm. relationship. Yes, I can just by getting a fresh nail set. And you're like, you know, you know what? I'm done saying. with him. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But, <laughs> true. But, you know, not literally, but it just mm. goes to show the power mm. that confidence Yes, yes. I has. totally understand what in, you're trying to exactly, say. Exactly. Yeah. In, 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 in making somebody mm. successful mm. or prosper in mm. life, to have that confidence. So mm. That was one of the reasons why I started my business because mm. I realized that a lot of women are just tolerated. Mm. They're just settling for the mm. sake of BJ. The and there are of... some of us who mm. are in this beauty boutique mm. who are here yeah. saying that, guys, we True. are here. We mm. want to prioritize you, mm-hmm. you guys. You know, at every mm. step, do you like the shave? Mm. Do you like the application? Do you, do you like, like the, the air? Do you Everything. like the yeah, You know what I'm saying? Before mm. somebody can leave, because mm. you know, and them having to see that you know, you don't like this, mm. they won't even feel nice in public mm. to mm. shake somebody's hand yeah. or to wave, <laughs> or, or even you just yeah, feel yeah. like okay, hiding. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So that's that's confidence mm. definitely plays a big role. Yeah. True. So I want to ask you a very, very nice, interesting question. What's your aspiration in life? Yo, <laughs> yes. I think I know. Mm-hmm. I believe mm-hmm. my aspiration in life is to impact. Mm. Um. There's nothing that fulfills me more mm-hmm. than somebody saying, you know what, I've been watching you, mm-hmm. I've been checking you out, mm-hmm. and I'm inspired. Mm-hmm. And with that inspiration, they use it, mm-hmm. they channel it into mm-hmm. impacting the next person. Mm-hmm. It's so it's kind of a trickle effect for me. If I start mm-hmm. with you, tomorrow it's somebody else that mm-hmm. you have encountered. Mm-hmm. So I think for me, it's 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 definitely to be impactful across everything that I'm doing, mm-hmm. be it in my business, mm-hmm. uh, be it in terms of pageantry, mm-hmm. um, be it in terms of the work that my mm-hmm. foundation does, mm-hmm. which is very, very important mm-hmm. in terms of impacting, but also in terms of my career advancement, mm-hmm. what I'm studying, I really want mm-hmm. to change something in the next person positively mm. so, so I, I can say that that is definitely mm. my aspiration that's so beautiful <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay so like how do you see your growth like comparing yourself from the Mary Grace that was 18 years old and the Mary Grace today like what would you say to her I can say Zibana just be patient mm. <laughs> just be mm. patient um just be patient mm. and trust in God. Put God first always. Yeah. Um, believe in yourself. Mm. You are capable. Mm. You have the potential. You have what it mm. takes. And you can do it. Mm. Um, that's definitely what I would tell my 18-year-old mm. self. Mm. Wherever she is. Yeah. She's somewhere there. She's somewhere there. But looking at you. <laughs> looking at me. And yeah, she's, like, she's like, like, oh my gosh. You know I'm what? so proud. Yeah. You made it. Yeah. I mean... Not bad, it, but like mm. we're getting there. We're, you're getting there. You know, I'm a step further mm. than I was yesterday, and that, that's mm. the most important thing. I'm a step further. Mm. I'm not 
a yard or a mm, hectare or yeah. you know I'm a step mm. further than I was yesterday mm. I think that's something that people mm. must also be mindful of mm. you can't expect growth or success or mm. change mm. to happen like in you know seconds, yeah. for this, for she, it, you know you know what mm. I'm saying um, it will take time mm. it will take a step for it to change it mm. will take a step for your life to you know completely mm. you know but you're one step closer than you were mm. and that's the most important thing yeah that's amazing um so um how did pageants um impact you they definitely impacted me in a positive way mm -hmm. um before mary grace all the while <laughs> mm. Mm. How old were you? Wait, how old were you when you started pageantry? Uh, maybe I was in my grade. Uh, really? How oh, much? I know you've been in the game. I've been in the game. Ah, I've been like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I okay, haven't been you. consistent. Mm. I think if I was consistent, I'd definitely be. be. Mm. You know? mm. So, but um, I started at a very young age mm. and it taught me a lot mm -hmm. because with pageantry, I think. It's also a common misconception for people to say that with pageantry, mm. you just see this beauty side of yes, it. Yes, true. Um, you don't know, you don't see the business skills that go into it. Mm. Having to go to a business and ask for sponsorship, that's money. Mm. Everybody wants money. True. Everybody is not just going to give you a hundred dollars mm. without you saying, mm. like, you know, mm. what's what do you bring to the table? Exactly. So yeah. um, it teaches you those kind of skills that you mm. can use outside of it mm. um we have businesses those are the mm. kind of skills that we can use when we're going to ask mm. or have conversations with investors mm. to say i've got this kind of a business mm. and i need an investment i need mm. capital um confidence as mm. well i used to mm. be very shy mm -hmm. very very introverted mm. and i think that now i'm able to mm. um kind of put myself out there mm -hmm. i'm not as you know i entered a poetry slam competition in mm -hmm. high school I wasn't even able to complete my piece. Mm. As soon as I got there, everybody was looking at me. Yeah. I saw the eyes. The eyes saw me. I ran off stage. <laughs> You're like, and I could not do it. Mm. But the following year, um, also because I was doing pageants at the time, mm. the following year, got there, did mm. my shindig. And you ate. And I ate. That's amazing. I got the <laughs> title, you know, yes. so it, 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 it stems from mm. pageantry because it taught me how to be comfortable mm. in front of a group mm. of people mm. um also in terms of putting yourself out there and mm. having your own voice mm. um sometimes as an introvert your voice tends to get lost mm -hmm. inside the voices of people who speak like for this you. you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying because they're extroverts so mm. not because you're an introvert mm -hmm. you can't even because every time you wanna, <laughs> you wanna <laughs> somebody you, you see so it kind yeah, of also you. teaches you mm. um having your own voice mm. and it gives you purpose mm. it forces you to look at yourself mm. and ask yourself for a what am i passionate about mm -hmm. what am i trying to change mm. that is happening around me that i don't mm. like what is it that i can do to contribute to the work of somebody mm. else that is in alignment mm -hmm. with my own mm. uh, brand mm. so those are definitely the things that it it, it has taught me mm. and that it's still teaching me even using your social media mm. as a weapon for mm. impacting or inspiring mm. or empowering i mean mm. now we're having this conversation mm -hmm. yeah. somebody who's in america can watch this video True. and take something from the mm. conversation that we're mm. having now all because it's being put on a social media mm. platform so also having the discernment to be able to see um that you can use social media for mm -hmm. good yes. you can you can use True. it to reach audiences that mm. are all over the world mm. so it, it's definitely something that is mm. still is, is teaching me those mm -hmm. kind of things and it's something that i can see is taking a lot of girls from mm -hmm. the streets and putting them away from all of that mm. it's teaching them discipline it's teaching mm. them business Mm -hmm. it's teaching them confidence, mm -hmm. giving them the tools to be able to make something mm -hmm. out of their lives. Yes, that's amazing. So I want to ask you one last question before we close up. How would you define a woman in power? I think I know. Mm -hmm. I believe mm -hmm. a woman in power. <laughs> a woman in power mm -hmm. is definitely 
a woman who is unshakable. Mm. She does not shake mm. because of what you said to her mm. that you wanted to provoke her. Yeah. Um, she does not shake because you rejected her idea mm. or you rejected her. Mm. She does not shake just because, you know. So I think for me, a, a woman in power is definitely somebody that's grounded in themselves, mm. that knows their why, mm. that knows their purpose, mm. because with that purpose, they can be able to move mm. in a direction um, that is aligned with their fate, mm. that is aligned with their destiny, mm. um, that they can use to empower mm. the next person so mm. definitely a woman in power mm. empower yes <laughs> true <laughs> thank you so much for coming thank you, you did so amazing for me. <laughs> thank you thank you so much guys see you on the next episode of the women in power segment on the larry show bye